What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Logistical Styles coming at you with another video and we are back in the lab and we're going to get back into some tutorials. So keep watching and we're going to jump into pitch play on the Rain 70. Welcome back YouTube. Like I said, we are back to using the Rain 70. I mentioned in my previous video that I did get a replacement finally from Rain. So now I'm ready to get back into what I've been doing and what I really enjoy doing on this channel and that is the tutorials. So I was looking at my previous videos and I see that one of the most popular videos on my channel is using pitch play and key shift with the Pioneer SR2. Now that was a couple of years, or it was a few years ago. I don't have that uh, controller anymore, but the Rain 70 does have built-in controls for pitch play. And I figure why not revisit the idea of pitch play because it's a good uh, technique to incorporate into your routines, especially like your battle routines or any type, any type of performance routine. Here are the printed instructions on how to use pitch play uh, with the Rain. 70 or basically just pitch play in general and I'll go into the instructions on how to use it with the rain 70. Now the important information is actually at the bottom of this page and it's very important to note that pitch play mode is available once the pitch and time DJ expansion pack has been activated in the my Serato window. Make sure you pitch and time enable is in check in the expansion pack setup of the setup screen. So we'll go over that one more time. In fact, I'll take this time to go into settings and then go into my Serato. Let's go into my products. My products pulls up a Safari window. And when I open that up, it shows a list of my account. It shows my account with a list of the software that I have. I have a Serato DJ Pro, Serato Play, uh, Serato Pitch and Time DJ, Serato Video, Serato Flip, Serato DVS, Wolfpack, Backpack. I just have, I have just about every uh, expansion pack. I have most of them. There are a couple of, I don't really, I was collecting the different um, sound effects packs, but I realized I don't use those, especially once I got a mixer that has built in or hardware effects. So, um, yeah, it's there. I have those effects, but the main expansion packs I use are DVS. Um, I use Flip sometimes. I tried to use video, but video is just too taxing on my computer. Pitch and Time is what I use, and Serato Play. That allows me to play uh, without the hardware connected, and I still have a full screen. We'll get into that in another video and Serato DJ Pro, which is the full license, which gives me everything so I don't have to worry about uh, what piece of gear I'm on, as long as it's a Serato enabled device or a Serato uh, accessory, it will work with my uh, setup, with my laptop. But pitch and time, this is what you have to have. You have to have pitch and time activated in your Serato. And so if you click on here, you have a link to see how do you ex activate the expansion pack and the way you do it is you have to go into your Serato, which I'll switch back over to. I have a button here that shows my expansions uh, and it shows everything that I have that you just saw from the previous screen online. But this is a way to see your expansions without having to open up a, um, a, a Safari window or a web browser. And you see the check marks here. So even though one thing you will notice is uh, when we were on the, the web browser, it said that I had Serato Studio. Now I did at one point have the trial version when it first came out, but I don't really use it. I may get into it and try to learn some stuff in there because I did, uh, I used to make beats and I still occasionally dabble with it, but uh, I haven't done a lot of it lately, but I think I want to get back into it. So it looks like they have an offer for me, which is probably a subscription or a chance to buy it. Um, a full license at a discounted price. I'll look at that later. But the effects one is not checked. I should check that. Go ahead and check that. I wonder what's up with that. Well, anyway, let's look at pitch and time. Pitch and time is activated. It's got a green check mark. So let's go ahead and close that out. Let's go into the expansion pack tab right here. And this is where you see what's listed, what I have. 
that's actually available. And under when you highlight each one, you get the option to enable it. So Serato video is enabled. Uh, my sample is enabled. Playlists are enabled. Remote pitch and time is enabled. So you got to make sure you have pitch and time enabled in your Serato. Otherwise, you won't even be able to open up the um, the pitch and time sec section for the pads. So let's move over back over to the mixer and then get out of the settings. And you really didn't have to go. Yeah, let me get out of there. So the way pitch and time works is it allows you to assign a sample or a sound that is connected to a cue point. You take a sound or a cue point and you can pitch it up or you can pitch it down using the keypads or the pads on your mixer. And to get to that, once you have it activated in your uh, software and once you have the um, hardware connected to your mixer, to your laptop, then you can just double tap the hot cue button on the Rain 70. I'm not sure if it's the same thing on the 72, but on the Rain 70, if you double tap it, you will get put into the pitch and play um, mode. And then you'll see that the pads have one white pad and the rest of the pads are the color of the cue point that you are manipulating. If you go back into your regular cue point, hot cue, you'll see that the first hot cue in my example is red. Second's yellow, green, then like a teal color. So if I go back into um, pitch play mode and I hit shift, I can see the colors or see the original or see what cue points are available. So if I want to do the third one, which is green, I just click on that. Now green has gotten a little bit brighter. That means that's the one that I'm activating. So when I release this shift button, you can see the rest of the pads are now green and the base or the original is white. So let's play. And let me actually back it up a little bit. I think I'm end up having to rearrange some things, but let me back it up a little bit. Before you had this option, there were a couple of different ways that you could do pitch play and one way I did it was by recording um, a lot of different tones of different pitches onto one audio file and then I would put cue points there and that would allow me to kind of play with a, a, a tone. It was a really roundabout way of getting it done and it wasn't really effective but it's going to help out now because I have this example and I can show you exactly what I was doing. So let's back up out of the uh, pitch play mode for a moment and let's look at what I have here. This is the uh, way or the file I made. It's called Lead Synth Tones. And basically it sounds like this. We'll just start from the beginning. That's one tone. It's another one space in between so you get the idea I had something like that so I could do pitch play in its most basic form it was pitch play it's kind of, it's a long like I said it's a roundabout way of getting it done because you have to record this track with the different pitches and then set up the cue points and then you're limited to only those particular uh, tones that you recorded. What pitch play does, it allows me to, I'm going to tap it again, it allows me to take one of those cue points and then just really transpose it. So that's what it sounds like originally. And then if I wanted to, I can use my parameter button right here to go up another set of tones, which is why you see that the uh, original sample has now moved down here because I can go up there and then up there. So I can go. Now if I move my parameter button back, now I'm in the middle or which, which is the, the default mode. So we went up some, I came back and now I can go down. So you'll see the uh, button, the parameter buttons light up differently. So now also the uh, original sample is up in the corner because I can go down 
seven more tones. So I go. Now, if you're really quick and you're really creative, you can jump in between the different uh, levels of the tone play. But for me, it's more about uh, the easiest way thing, for, easiest thing for me to do is start, keep it at the default in the middle and then find some kind of melody that you might want to play around with. So that's an example of one way you can incorporate the pitch play technique into your uh, routines, or one way to, to show how it works. So now if I want to hit shift and then come back to one of my other sounds, I can pull that up and then I have this. There you have it. Pitch play. In a nutshell, real easy. So remember, even though it's not labeled on the mixer as such, pitch play. So on the mixer, on the 70, you have your uh, different modes that you can put your pads in, and they're all labeled at the top. But a lot of these have double uh, functions. So if you hit it once, it brings you into the pitch mode. If you hit it again, it brings you into the hot cue mode. With the other button, you hit the save loop mode, you hit it again, you can make it a custom loop um, or a custom MIDI mode. You can program it to do other things. But today we were just looking at the pitch play. So let's go back into uh, the hot cue mode, hit it again. We're in pitch play mode. We have the selected uh, pad, which is the teal one, but I want to switch over to red. Now I have the option of being able to play these, this sound at different pitches. And there you have it, pitch play. So I hope this was a quick, informative video. Um, took me a little while to set all this stuff up, but hopefully I can edit it up and make it make sense when you're watching it. So if this is helpful, please be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, comment, let me know what you think about the video, and I uh, will continue to try to make more informative comment, content like this. So keep watching and I will see you on the next video. Peace.